Orchestra of Racing returns. Now on the premium gaming platform in PC. Now is this a case of a class up from the console versions or have the game development stewards scrutinised the engine to keep them evenly matched? Now contrary to popular belief or view, PC does not mean that all players are sporting Ryzen CPUs, RTX GPUs and SSD and as such I use two ends of the PC space to demonstrate scaling of the engine and the art which straddles the console space. My entry level FX 8350 and Nvidia 750 Ti both overclocked stand as something that has carried me through this entire console generation. The octo-core CPU is still more than a match for all four consoles with that operating system, DX and driver load reducing the benefits of its higher IPC and clocks. GPU wise the 750Ti was always better on paper than the X1 but it could perform worse at times than it. Now, on paper the 750 is close to the PS4's GPU but my years of testing has shown it can often fall behind likely bandwidth being its biggest deficit to the PS4. It obviously lags considerably behind both premium consoles which means I will keep comparisons mainly to the base machines. Taking the internal built-in race benchmark at similar settings to the Xbox One, as close as I can get from my tests, puts us off a 60 FPS line at all. Across an equal lap in daytime conditions we see that turning on that checkerboard option at the same settings and 1080p output gives us approximately 35% gain to hit an almost locked 60. But it isn't locked throughout. Taking off V-Sync does help a little but you get very similar performance to both the Xbox One on the checkerboard solution and lower than the PS4 on the non-checkerboard solution. If you V-Sync it, it's pretty much a 30 FPS game. Now remember, judging by the lap times and the views here, it can considerably affect the performance. You can see upwards of 10 FPS drop, going from an outside view to an internal cockpit view again. This comes from additional benefits of geometry, the rear plane of view reflections, and all those other elements that add extra load to both the CPU and the GPU. So just be aware that your viewport will affect the performance. Zoomed in with that checkerboard solution on, it's very similar settings to the Xbox One, slightly better than the Xbox One, slightly worse than the PS4, but you can see the texture filtering and, and the AA is reduced on the consoles over what we see on the TAA solution on the PC, and that gives it a slightly jagged, more softer look in certain points and a cleaner look at certain others. What is surprising is that checkerboard TAA solution is very close to the standard TAA solution and again this points to the fact that I'm more inclined to believe it's the shading sacrifices and not the geometry sacrifices and that's why we're not seeing such a huge sacrifice. TAA does soften the image drastically anyway. You can see the pixel throughput improve the image quality moving up to the premium consoles. And that final shift into the native 4K on the top end PC here, which is close to the 4K checkerboard solution on the Xbox One X, which I've already covered. It's very close between the two, but it's certainly a beneficial use of that hardware resource, gaining you back up to 40% at its highest point, which means you'd be a fool to leave that performance off the table if you are struggling with any other settings. And that 40% gain is something the 750Ti requires to get a locked 60. This matches the Xbox One output with higher settings of the PS4, but again, the reduction in memory space, bandwidth and shading all help bring performance in line and better than the PS4 with its reduction to scaling or whatever it's doing with its checkerboard solution. Trying to push above 1080p though is not possible or feasible on this card. As all things considered, it's memory bound at all times with its use of VRAM and as shown, it's already fill rate and bandwidth starved. It still shows we have a good level of performance here that sits perfectly between the Xbox One and the PS4. CPU wise we are not in dangerous territory on this CPU with it giving us a good idea how the much slower Jaguar cores are faring both from IPC and clock rate. Single core load can hit 70% here which means it could be occasional cores for dips on both consoles something which the premium consoles likely resolve due to sheer force of that 30 something percent clock increase they enjoy. From a PC perspective, it really favours around four cores, and this game will run well across a four core CPU, even though it will use all of your cores with Windows handling that balance across all of the threads you might give it, it's really GPU bound far more often than anything else. And it puts the GTX 750Ti and the FX8350 a worthy second place into that spot between the Xbox One S and the PS4, but it's very close and certainly good enough to enjoy on your PC delights. 
Now, many may want to see what maximum settings look like, but before we get to that, let's take a look at the console settings. Now, the Xbox One S aside, which sits around low in some places that the other three don't, they all share the same settings aside of the PS4 being a native output and the Pro and the X using a checkerboard solution to reach their respective 3200 by 1800 and 3840 by 2160 p Now, from my tests here, we can see going from ultra low to low adds in AO and you can see a slightly better geometry off into the distance on the rock face but the screen looks flat floating cars with no grounding of objects no reflections no specular highlights at all really now low adds in some contact shadows of a screen space variety which stands out with black bands that appear when occluded by foreground passes and shadow maps on cars and a higher level of LOD bias as you can see into the background now, medium improves some of these areas, such as AO, and it adds screen space reflections, image proxies from the car reflections, higher quality plane reflections, and shadow maps. This is almost a perfect match here once you go to high with the X and obviously the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. The difference is AO is still of the screen space variety, but better quality than the medium on PC. Specular lighting is also slightly lower resolved than on PC, and you can see screen space reflections kicking in on top of the steering yoke dash there and also on the building edges as well and that refinement is really where the ultra settings on pc come in it refines everything much better moving away from screen space ambient occlusion bringing hbao plus horizon based ambient occlusion and even adaptive screen space ambient occlusion which is the highest setting on pc but that again can have a performance hit but it does remove those thick black lines which you can see often in the pc versions which is an obvious sign that it's using screen space ambient occlusion but it does at least give that nice occluded look to objects. Now the one difference between the Xbox One and the other versions is the PS4 and the PC look to be running ultra low shadows. In fact, they're almost identical as you can see here. But I thought that the actual Xbox One version was running a high version, but looking at them now on PC, I'm inclined to feel it's actually the other way around, and actually they're lower than the lowest setting on PC, which is probably one of those sacrifices it needed just to push it close to that 4K checkerboard solution. It's a minor slight, and actually at some points, like I say, it can actually look better because it gives softer shadows, but you can see example on screen of comparing through the whole tree of PC and console, which means by and large you're looking at high settings on console, and the PC can go obviously higher than that, which is a refined looking version, but really it's not a huge leap over the console versions and those 4K resolutions are probably the biggest difference you'll see across all versions that you play, with the console versions getting close but not quite as sharp and crisp as we see on the PC. same settings as consoles, my much higher end RTX 2070 and Zen 2700 are enough to keep this close to 64K native, pretty much with room to spare. But even at maximum ultra settings, which adds more details, resolution and refinement, which I've just covered, it's close to 60 with VSync engaged, but it really does dip below it more often than you probably like. So to truly lock it with room to spare, then combine it with that TAA and checkerboarding is the perfect option to just switch on and forget about it. Big dips come in replays that can see it plummet below 30 FPS without it. We do see dips on consoles here also, but never this bad or prolonged. And in the great scheme of things, this is a minor slight for ultra settings on this machine at 4K. You can see from the comparison that 4K X is not as clean as the 4K PC due to that checkerboard solution, but it is close enough between them and even the Pro to only really stand out in these side-by-sides and is a perfect return of circa 40% performance that can be used elsewhere. And as I've said before, I see this being used more often in the next generation consoles and PC, and I for one am all for it. Some may complain that the high-end PC does not push those settings up enough, not me, but the devs have crafted an excellent scalable engine that looks cracking over a huge range of hardware, APIs and operating systems. All formats use the hardware well, with PC offering the sharpest, most refined version if you have the hardware, with console players not really missing out. Out. A GPU dependent title with a range of options that can scale performance up to 45% from ultra low to ultra capped off with another 35% with that checkerboard solution means the widest audience possible can still dip into some clean and silky smooth 60fps F1 action. And 
You even get faster loading times and slightly faster response times on those high-end PCs as well, which I covered on my console version. Now, I hope you enjoyed this fast look at the PC version. Check out my console one for a full comparison on these and subscribe, like and share as it really helps and I appreciate each and every one of you that does. You can also check out my review which should be up tomorrow or slightly later this week. You guys and girls take care and I'll catch you on the next one.